won Oscar nominations for his roles in Midnight Express, The Elephant Man. He also appeared in the Harry Potter series and was lauded for outstanding performances in both Hollywood films and on British TV. Nick Heim looks back at his life, which career, career which spans six decades. Everything seemed to come to a head today. John Hurt as the political diarist Alan Clark. Both my back wisdom teeth have disintegrated into blackened stumps or stalagmites. Not a nice man, but an unexpectedly sympathetic one. The sort of complex character John Hurt played with such ease and subtlety. Ever since mother died, I've followed you around the cafes with my violin. His talent was spotted early in a succession of leading stage and television roles. I listened to you discussing the menus of the set meals and then I've gone to bed. Take it. Thank you. His first big breakthrough came in 1966. What will you do with it? In A Man for All Seasons. Sell it. And buy what? A decent gown. A small part, but in a high-profile, Oscar-winning film. I'll be getting a new job shortly, I should wonder. They've uh, asked me if I want to train as a manager, or as a managing director. A few years later, he was starring opposite Richard Attenborough in 10 Rillington Place. Won't you have to learn to read and write for that? Oh, no, no, no. You have uh, secretaries, things like that, see. He played the illiterate Timothy Evans, wrongly hanged for a murder he didn't commit. But with this in his hand! On television, he was the mad Roman Emperor Caligula in the BBC's I, Claudius. But, Joe, you ordered no triumphs. Well, of course I ordered no triumphs. Do you think I'd order triumph for myself? But you ordered us not to order any. Yes, and you took me at my word, didn't you? Look at me. And then came the naked civil servant. I wear rouge, I wear mascara on my eyelashes, I dye my hair, I wear flamboyant clothes, far more outré than those I'm wearing now. You say you are homosexual. I am homosexual irretrievably. He played the notorious and flamboyant Quentin Crisp. Well... It was a defining moment in his career. I didn't put on any of my usual makeup. Though people said it was a brave was part to take on. But there's my hair and my fingernails. Many people said, don't do that. You'll never work again. And so on. And that's it. But it's not about homosexuality, actually. It's about, it's about the tenderness of the individual as opposed to the cruelty of the crowd, really. Hundred kilos. He earned an Oscar nomination for Midnight Express, in which he played a heroin addict in a Turkish prison. Got bail. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Merrick. And there was another Oscar nomination for his performance as the hideously disfigured John Merrick in The Elephant Man. I just tried. I got used to being treated so well by a beautiful woman. Like Quentin Crisp, Merrick was an outsider, ostracized by society. It's a good idea. How can she make a song written by a machine sound so beautiful? His lined and weathered face meant he was perfect in the film 1984 as George Orwell's reluctant rebel Winston Smith. Odds or evens? Evens? No, I've only got one pea in my hand. He accepted all the film and television parts he was offered, though that meant stage appearances like this were rare. Well, that's something that no one can advise you on. You move like a racehorse. You walk like a derby winner. He remained in demand as the years passed. He played Stephen Ward, society schemer and later victim of the Profumo affair in Scandal. I could do wonders with you, little baby. You're my future selves. Yes! Late in his career, he made a guest appearance in Doctor Who. Why are you pointing your screwdrivers like that? They're they noticed his distinctive voice, once described as a mixture of honey and acid. Phil, loving the posh gravelly things, very convincing. <laughs> to treat your corns, I will... Few actors were busier, almost 200 screen roles alone. Few actors were as reliably and engagingly watchable. Well, the screenwriter and executive editor of Variety magazine, Stephen Gados, told me how he would remember John Hurt. Well, I think you know, the sadness is universal because uh, I'm sure he was loved in every corner of the earth. Uh, 205 credits uh, between film and TV. Uh, he liked to work. 
Uh, a director once told me there are two kinds of actors, the, those who hate acting and those who love acting. Uh, John Hurt was the latter. And uh, we, we know him through his many varied roles, but I understand that you had a, a certain dinner with him. Just tell us about the man, his character. Uh, well, he was the quintessential English gentleman, uh, you know, in, in when I met with him uh, about 15 years ago. Of course, uh, it was, uh, you know, a joyful thing for me to be able to sit down and have a conversation with someone I admired as a, as a great artist. And he was just a very humble, uh, decent uh, fellow. Um, he did recall his early days and, and reminded me, you know, John's first credit is 1962. And uh, he was in A Man for All Seasons with Paul Schofield uh, in 66. You know, most people know him from probably 79 on from Alien. Uh, but, you know, he started so early, and he was part of a pretty rabble-raising uh, uh, group of actors in, uh, in the U.K. Uh, who liked to, to drink and, and have fun. And uh, a lot of them did not make it to, to uh, the, the extent of life that he did. But uh, just a, an incredible gentleman, and in looking over his filmography, he starts reminding me uh, so many great directors he's worked with. And, and one last point, his work right up to today was so fantastically rich uh, with great directors, little movies that, that you'll find, not the big blockbusters that, like Alien that he was known for, but he made a movie just a couple of years ago called Only Lovers Left Alive for um, Jim Jarmusch. And here's, here's another thing that's, uh, that's sort of a jewel for us. He just played Neville Chamberlain in a movie with Gary Oldman that hasn't come out yet. He did pop up in so, in so many films. I mean, you did mention that generation he was a part of, Oliver Reed, Richard Burton, Peter O'Toole. He was really one of the, the greats. I mean, what, what role stood out for you as, as his kind of quintessential piece? Well, you know, he uh, he was not afraid to tackle big characters. So uh, Quentin Crisp, I think, was a true breakthrough. About 13 years after he started, he played Quentin Crisp in The Naked Civil Servant for British TV. I think that really established him, and it was only a few years later that Ridley Scott put him in Alien, and then the whole world knew him. Of course, Elephant Man. Uh, I'm sort of an tourist, to use a pretentious word. Um, so I like the fact that he was in Osterman Weekend for Sam Peckinpah. I, I love his work in Heaven's Gate for Michael Cimino. Um, there's, there's, there's no coincidence that great uh, directors with great visions use John Hurt because he never let him down. You know, he was always, you can't find a bad John Hurt performance for my money. He had such a iconic face and I guess voice as well, which, which lended itself for being a bad guy and also a good guy in films. Yeah, you know, he had this softness and this tenderness. He was in a John Huston movie very early on that is just really comic and wonderful, and he plays a very naive youth called Sinful Davy, uh, a little bit of an obscurity. But then, like I said, he can go and play Caligula, and he can play absolute villains. He worked wonderfully in spy films. Uh, it wasn't that long ago he did the, the sort of remake of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, you know, there was something opaque and mysterious about him, but he wasn't guarded. You know, the quality of, of John Hurtis was he was mysterious and he was sort of elusive, but he was accessible. That's the mark of a, of a great actor. You know, he, he had that, as you say, that very distinctive look. He was always John Hurt, but he was never the same guy in, in two movies. That was Stephen Gados from Variety Magazine talking to me about the life and work of John Hurt.